Oh yeah, this happened. That was weird, right? I can't believe we managed to get ourselves into such a good mood by playing with Apollo that we forgot about all of this stuff. lost on anyone that like we, we've had a couple of very particular important seeming dreams about this hidden location in Sapphire Ridge and this was all ages ago and Sergei's just been asking us very very slowly to elaborate and exposit on it I just find that weird feeling that Trani is, uh, very coincidentally leaving a detail out here. Yeah, there, there's some kind of reading I'm getting off of this, but fuck if I can tell what. Well, let's just go on with it. Oh, by the way, we got EXP for finishing that quest, but we literally couldn't process it until we went to sleep. Because that's just how cutscenes in this game work. It's all thematic, you see. Anyway, what if instead of meeting up with Troni, we did advanced tower defense? What if we didn't? Uh, we'll never know. We have an optional quest to do uh, tower defense hard mode, which technically goes on um, to infinity, but we're only required to get uh, 500 points out of it, which is like pretty much just eight waves again. Hard tower defense is pretty much identical to easy tower defense, except you start out with all the elements and all the turret positions unlocked, and the enemies all scale up to... I think it's they, they always scale up to your level, but the important part is they start at a given level which means that we are technically kind of underleveled for this. The good news is that the turrets also scale to whatever the enemies are scaling to. The turrets are pretty much always as effective, regardless of level, so... This whole thing basically just becomes... You fight like hell to stay alive for the first couple of waves until you can get stuff set up. And if you can get it set up in any kind of an intelligent way, you can probably about roll with it. Just let the turrets do the work for you, I suppose. Yeah, like some kind of tower defense game. We're just bending genres here. But yeah, um, could I have stood to just get a few more levels before doing this 
uh, probably. Uh, could I have used the admittedly not very effective but not completely unaffected text that I had a little bit more effectively? Maybe. Could I have used literally any ice turrets? Maybe. But who cares, we just squeaked over the target. We get the quest clearance. Fuck you. So what are turret tokens and why do we care about them? Well, uh, this is why. I say that as though this is, like, explains why you will care about them, which you won't. I'm just saying this is why you could care about them. Because uh, you can trade them for stuff. I believe this is the only way that you can get the final dinner. Which gives you um, all of the major stat buffs for two minutes. Like, it's pretty good, but it's not play advanced tower defense for several minutes for each one good. Anyway, we're about done with everything. So let's get on with it. Did you know that Tronny is good? I think it's possible we didn't know this. He certainly has his moments. I guess somebody had to be the adult here and it wasn't gonna be Emily. I do have to say that uh, Emily's theme is a little, uh... It's very her. I don't want to say it doesn't... It doesn't... F I don't want to say it doesn't fit, but it's kind of like... I don't... <laughs> I think it's perfect. I don't know, I was expecting something a little more... Sorrowful, maybe? And then it's just, here's this jaunty little French tune. Like I said, it's perfect. Anyway, you want something sorrowful? We can say sorry now. There's your sorrow. So anyway, I hear we're into dungeon races. That's great, because we've got three dungeons in front of us. Y 
you can do either of them in, in any order, and you can do stuff in between if you want, but... Basically, the two the two starting ones, so Sonai's Temple and Zavatar Temple, are basically just one dungeon. In fact, all three of these are basically just one dungeon, and instead of a balcony, we have like a, an entire plot moment in the middle. Anyway, we're all back together again, so obviously the first thing that we have to do is remove these guys from our party and then call them on the phone. Because we can't just have these conversations while they're in our party. Because, uh... No, I still don't really know why. That's how you know they're back. Let's go say the water trotty. The water isn't real. Someday we're gonna prove it. So anyway, we could go and do these dungeons, but what if we went on a tour of Gaia's Garden and found out what our friends have to say about all these enemies? Man, he's back. I'm so pleased that he's back. Emily, you have a very interesting definition of chill there. Yeah. So you remember earlier when I said that the slots were particularly Final Fantasy XIII? Uh, this is what I mean. They do the normal thing where they, they get staggered and you can do huge damage, but they have a recovery animation from getting staggered. And if you keep hitting them while they're doing their recovery animation, you can just double stagger them. It fucks them up. It's a great time. They also have mushroom discourse. I'd be disappointed if they didn't. So much cat discourse. Which is fortunate, because once you get the hang of fighting them, the cats actually go down pretty easily. Especially once they no longer out-level you and you can actually do damage parity. Also, yeah, that's true. You never see the shock ass sleeping, and I feel like that's kind of an oversight. I mean, hell, if they could sleep, then maybe some players might not always fight them. I mean, I'm still inherently disappointed by the fact that you have to fight them all the time. Anyway, Emily actually has the right of this one. Cats basically domesticated themselves. It was this whole thing. If anything, like, cats domesticated us.
This is a surprisingly good question. You know, I could believe it. Say this game like this is gonna need a lot of capital. Might as well, uh, open the door for some... some advertisements for arms manufacturers. No, we are never getting off of this bullshit. Not once. Uh, anyway, I kind of messed up a tiny bit with uh, my exploring around here, and I basically solved this a little bit ahead of time. I say solved, I mean I, I went into Royal Grove from the correct direction, and then pressed the button. Ah, we can't undo that. So, whatever. Emily, please don't bring up the seahorses around Trotty, it's traumatic. Okay, okay, thank you, Trotty. We, we get it. I told you. We get- we get the joke. We're never getting off this bullshit. This bullshit cannot be gotten off. Oh, also... Gaia's Garden has so much stuff in it that we went above 75% total botany. Speaking of plants... You know, I actually didn't know that one. Yeah. It's a cool fact. It's an actual fun fact. I mean, funnily enough, I'd be surprised if any of these guys managed to get in more than a half dozen bites during their lifetime as well, but that's because we murdered them. I don't know if that's really the same kind of a deal. That's true. He absolutely would have. You know, I gotta say I'm a little disappointed that he didn't take the opportunity to instead drop like some sick biology about like cells or something. I mean, we're getting to that. But it's quickly cut off. Anyway, that's it from Guy's Garden. We've gone and murdered literally every single creature with every single available party. Anyway, we get a... yet another level of straw hat for our trouble. It's exactly the same as the other one, except the numbers on it are higher. Still a pretty good piece of equipment, actually. Especially if you're into focus. Focus builds are good. I believe we've established that. But there's also this electrician's cap, which gives us shock and wave resistance, and also has really good stats. I've got a whole defense thing going on in this build. We're, like, basically invincible now. 
I get the feeling that we may be very interested in having some shock and wave resistances in the next, like, video or two. Mm hmm Now, for our final trick, what if we hadn't done the Pumpkin Funland quest until we had Emily back on the team? I mean, I didn't have to do this. I just... just... As a treat, because I love her so much, I went out of my way to bring Emily to this quest. And why not? Because she's the only, like, Emily on this quest is pretty much the only time anywhere in the entire, like, Gaia's Garden, base and keep, arc, that any of your party members get any dialogue in any of these quests. Except for the plot one with Holland. Did she actually leave? Please tell me she actually left. Oh, she she got KO'd. Oh. That's that's what happened. That's, it that's was very thematically fitting. Yeah, so that's that's unfortunate. I was really hoping that if you brought her to this quest, she actively left you in the middle of the finale. No, uh, fuck you, I'm logging out. I mean that would have been, you know even more ironic than normal on account of the whole, you know, thing where she was incredibly mad at us about the raid. First you abandoned me during the raid, and then when we finally get Black to play together, the first thing you do is take me to this place. Revenge. Everyone likes revenge. But yeah, I do find it kind of weird that nobody seems to have anything to say about any of these quests. Except Emily in this one. 